Now we're going to do um, our last problem in the series of uh, later rates. Okay, so the question is this. One car is moving north at 60 miles per hour away from city A. Another car is moving west at 50 miles per hour towards city A from city B, 200 miles away. At what rate is the distance between the two cars changing after 2.5 hours? Let's draw a picture. Um, let's make it big. So, uh, you, have, you have city A here. Um, you have city B here. Okay. Um, we have car A that's moving north, or car one of the cars moving north from city A. Um, let's say it's here. So car one's here, and cars and car two is somewhere in between A and B. Okay, um, we know that car A is moving north at 60 miles per hour, so moving at 60 miles per hour, and car B is moving uh, in this direction at 50 miles per hour. Okay, we know that this distance, uh, this distance here is uh, this is, this distance here is 200 miles between A and B. Alright, so, and we know that um, the time right now is 2.5 hours after they started in the journey. So, it would be great, it would be very helpful to know where they actually are. So, to do that, we do uh, rate times time equals distance, right? So, 60 times 2.5 is equal to uh, 120 plus 30 is equal to 150, 150 miles, and... Uh, 50 times 2.5 is equal to 125. Uh, 125. But we're interested in this distance here, distance from car A to 2. And that's going to be uh, 75. 200 minus 25 equals 75. Alright, so the question is asking us to find the distance between the two cars. It's actually asking us to find the rate. Um, at which the distance uh, between the two cars is changing. So the distance between two cars is going to be this thing here. Right? Um, so let's define some variables. Um, let's call this L. Let's call this X. And let's call this Y. Alright, so L, X, Y, and how are these related? Um, Pythagorean theorem, right? L squared equals Y squared plus X squared. All right. Um, and we want to know, what do we want to know? We want to know uh, dl over dt, the rate at which this thing is changing. Uh, and let's see. We know dy over dt, this, this one. dy over dt is 60 miles per hour. And um, we know dx over dt is 15 miles per hour. However, not quite. Um, I'll tell you why later, but for now it's going to be somewhat close to this. It's actually going to be negative 50 miles per hour, but I can wait. And then um, it'll be very helpful to know the actual distance. This and we actually will need it later, so let's calculate it now. Um, so it's going to be 50 squared plus 75 squared. Take the square root of that, and that comes out to be 75 times root five. 75 times root five miles. Okay, so here we go. So, uh, therefore, we know that x is equal to 75 miles, y is equal to 150, 150 miles, l is equal to 75 root 5 miles. dx over dt, now, um, because the car is traveling in this direction, we're, remember that we're interested in x. Not this distance, not this distance, but this distance here. So, because we're interested in x, x is shrinking, right? As the car approaches city A, x is shrinking. So, x, uh, so this distance is shrinking, therefore, we need a negative sign. So, it's going to be, dx over dt is going to be negative 50 miles per hour dy over dt is going to be, uh, we said this before, it's going to be 60 
60 miles per hour, and d l over d t is what we're trying to look for. Okay, so let's write the equation that uh, uh, that we want here. So x squared plus y squared is going to equal l squared, and let's differentiate both sides with respect to t. 2x dx over dt plus 2y dy over dt is equal to uh, 2l dl over dt. Okay, like that. Um, yeah, originally we would not solve all these, like, we would not solve for list, 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 list before actually writing the equation. But I did that because um, I knew what variables we needed. So I sort of, um, I guess, uh, ran before myself. But um, when you're doing problems and you don't know what variables you need, uh, probably will, probably um, would be better to first write the equations implicitly differentiate both sides and then see what you need. Okay. In this case I went sort of out of order. But anyway, um so oh yeah one thing. Even though you want the L over DT, do not take the square root of both sides first. Isolate L and then solve for the L over DT. Do not do that because um what's gonna happen is that you're going to it's it's you can do that if you want. You can, but it's going to be more tedious. It's a lot easier to just simply uh, differentiate both sides right now. Okay, so plug in everything you see. So it's going to be 2 times 75 times negative 50 plus 2 times 150 times 60 is going to equal 2 times 75 root five uh times d l over d t and if you solve for d l over d t um what you get is uh this turns out to be fourteen root five miles per hour. Okay so this distance is increasing. It's increasing at a rate of 14 root 5 miles per hour. Alright. And, um, okay. So that's the first part of the question. The second part of the question is, um, here we go. At what rate is the angle between the line connecting the cars and the west direction changing after 2.5 hours? Okay, so this is what I mean by this question here. This is an angle here, theta. Okay, this is an angle, um, yeah. Okay, this is an angle between the uh, line connecting the two cars and the west direction. This is west here. So, we want to know what at what rate um, is this angle changing. And um, to do that, we have to, let's see, write uh, our equation here. So let me redraw the picture. Y x down beta. Okay, so what's the equation relating y x and theta? It's going to be um tangent, right? Tangent theta equals y over x. Alright, and all I can say is go ahead and differentiate. So we're going to implicitly differentiate both sides with respect to time. So it's going to be secant, right? The derivative of tangent is secant. So secant squared secant squared theta d theta dt is going to equal, we have to use our chain rule here. So it's going to be the bottom times the derivative of top dy over dt minus the top y times the derivative of the bottom dx over dt all divided by the bottom squared, x squared. Uh, it will help to write this over here, so d theta over dt, 1 over secant is, co wait, 1 over secant squared is uh, equal to cosine squared, right, so cosine squared theta, and the uh, same thing here, let me just rewrite it. Probably can't read this because it's too small, but anyway. 
cosine squared of theta, what is that equal to? Well, cosine squared of theta, um, cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent is x, and hypotenuse is going to be your L. And we saw for L before, right? It was equal to 75 root 5. That's okay. So, since cosine, um, since cosine theta is equal to x over L, let's replace this into layer. And if we do that, we get d theta dt is going to equal x over L. Don't forget the squared sign here. x over L, x over L squared times x dy dt minus dx over dt all divided by x squared. And if we solve that, um, if we plug in everything, we know actually know L, we know dy, and we know we know dy over dt, and we know dx over dt. So let's plug everything in, and fine, I'll do it for you. Seventy-five over seventy-five root five squared times seventy-five over sixty minus one fifty. Remember, it's negative fifty here. Be careful. All divided by seventy-five squared. That's going to give you thirty. Okay, it's going to give you 32 over 75 degrees per hour. So, the rate is changing by 32 over 75 degrees per hour. I just sort of tricked you. No, it's not. And the reason is, it's not degrees, it's radians. Remember that when you're dealing with calculus, it's always radians here. Most of the time, it's radians. So, it's 32, 75, 32 over 75 radians per hour. Okay, don't mess it up. And then if you want to, you can convert that to degrees, and that's going to give you about 24.4 degrees per hour, which um, makes sense, right? It's about that, 24.4 uh, degrees per hour. So the hardest part um, in, these in these questions is coming up with the equation that contains the variables. Here, um, this was somewhat tricky. Uh, you had to know that tangent, you had to use tangent here, right? Because you have y and x and you have theta. And because you're looking for d theta over dt, you needed an equation that somehow included theta. And to do that, you have to use one of your trig functions. Okay, um, that's all we have for related rates. See you later.